Hi everyone, Ian here. Let's talk exporting to Lottie and this export to the web from Cavalry. So here we have a simple scene that Chris created after seeing an animation in the Monzo app. And it's not using any fancy features, it's just some keyframing really and some hierarchies. And to export this to, um, to Lottie, it, it's frankly embarrassingly simple. You just go to the file menu and just go export Lottie. Um, there's even a keyboard shortcut here for you as well, if that isn't fast enough. And then you just choose your destination and hit save. That will export the file for you. And then you can preview that, for example, on the excellent Lottie files. And this is what it looks like when it's up there. Now you can also use the render manager if you want to queue up several exports, uh, but the easiest way is just file export Lottie. Moving on. Let's create a simple looping loader like this from scratch. And the reason I'll do that is just to explain a few things, um, what you can do with Lottie, what you can't. And um, uh, just, you know, there's a couple of little tricks as well of some cool things that you can do in uh, Lottie export from Cavalry that are pretty tricky from other apps. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get going. Um, I'll just create a new scene and I'll create two circles. I'll position one to the left and one to the right. Then I'm gonna pick We'll give these colors. So we'll give this one this. So both got colors. Select them both. And then I'm going to hit um, Control G on Windows, Command G on the Mac to group them. And then uh, when, they're, when they're grouped, the group is what we're going to rotate. And so um, let's do that. So we'll load the settings for the group by Alt double clicking on it. And um, holding Alt when you double click on something will clear out the HP editor before it loads in the settings for the thing you just double clicked on. Then we'll set the keyframe on frame zero. Then on frame 50, we'll set a keyframe um, with a value of minus 180 degrees. And then on frame uh, 100, we'll set a rotation keyframe with a value of uh, minus 360 degrees. So we go all the way round. And then this is our glorious animation. And then the only thing that we need to do is to select the first two keyframes, uh, right click on them, go magic easing, and then choose spring out. And that will give us the kind of spring animation. Um, I'll, you can preview that in the graph editor if you want to see what the, um, the um, magic easing looks like. And the something to note about the um, uh, magic easing is all of these magic easing settings, they all export to Lottie. So, um, uh, and we do that with smart baking. So we don't put a keyframe on every frame. Uh, we do um, we're kind of very clever about it behind the scenes. We use kind of a minimum amount of keyframes to represent a curve. I can go into more detail about that in the future, um, but it's very clever how it works. Anyway, so here's our animation, marvelous. And then the last thing to do is the background. I'm gonna open the composition settings, which is the um, uh, button just here in the scene window. And then I'm gonna hold the Alt key and scrub um, the width and height just so that they, they lock together. And I'm just gonna make a, a square um, square box. I don't really mind how big the composition is, to be honest. Um, and then uh, with that done, I can create a background. So that's um, Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on Windows, make a background shape. We'll just drag that all the way to the bottom of the layer stack. And then we'll, with the settings for the background shape up in the HP editor, we'll switch to the fill tab. And then in the fill tab, this is where you set the color of things, uh, where it says shaders, we're gonna right click here. We're gonna go add shader, gradient shader. Okay, so double click on the gradient shader to load its settings. And there's something to know about shaders in Lottie and that is that Lottie supports linear gradients and radial gra gradients. It does not support conical gradients and it does not support sweep gradients. So you can only use the middle two in Lottie. But something we have been able to do is we have been able to um, support stepped gradients, which is not something that, that it's easy to do uh, elsewhere. So what do I mean by this? Well, uh, let's get our linear gradient. We'll rotate it so that the, it's more of a diagonal gradient. And then the white here, let's double click on that um, stop and change that to a, be kind of like a, a darkish gray. And then I'm going to right click on the gradient widget here and go subdivide gradient right click again, go subdivide gradient. And what this does is it just adds stops at regular intervals. Um, but now I've got stops at regular intervals. What I can do is I can change the interpolation of all of them at once. So I can right click, go set all, set all to stepped. And you'll see that we've got this kind of stepped gradient going on. I'm just gonna change the rotation of that to make it a bit more of an angle. And then that's it really. So that's our, that's our result. And something to note is that when you're exporting to Lottie from Cavalry, when you're using the file menu, the default name is whatever your composition is. So I can rename this composition to be a circle loader like so. And then when I use the shortcut to export to Lottie, I can just pop this on the desktop like so. And then I can load this up into Lottie files by dragging it in. 
and here's the result. So let's move on to something slightly more technically interesting. And in this scene, we'll use a duplicator and we'll use four lofts to create a different kind of uh, loader. And then we'll export that to Lottie and we'll see how, how you, what you have to do in order to get that out of cavalry. So if I just um, create a, a rectangle shape and then I make a duplicator, just click on duplicator up in the shelf here, then that's just gonna take that and make a grid of, of, um, of, of those rectangles. Um, then if I just bring up the settings for the rectangle, or double click, um, we can basically we can change um, the fill settings here so um, so that we can make these squares invisible and I want to control the the alpha of each of these squares I want to control that with a fall off so in order to do that what I need to do is I need to plug in a value behavior so just go add behavior and then we need to come down to to um, to a value then on the value behavior the the value that's being set is basically um, what whatever goes in this box here uh, you can see as I as I move this slider move the value up and down the slider is changing on the rectangle so if I set this to 100 in order to get a fall off to control this I need to switch to the fall off tab right click on fall offs go add fall off and then choose fall off like so and then i have this fall off here which i can uh, move around to control the opacity of these shapes so um, this fall off i want to be a, um, a rectangle so i can change the shape type to rectangle i'm going to make it a lot wider i'll rotate it like so and then i'm going to move it over over here and then I'll set um, a couple of keyframes. So I'm going to hold Alt and then click on the diamond on position X, which is going to set keyframes for X and Y because I held Alt. Then on, say, frame 20, I'll move this out the other side. So I'll just drag that down here. And that's my incredible animation. And then I'm going to hit N, so the N key, which will set the end frame to where the time thumb is. And then I'm going to press Alt R, so it's Alt R on Mac and it's Alt R on Windows. And Alt R sets the composition range to the uh, playback range. Um, so here is our animation. Cool. Now, I said I was going to do something with color, or at least I think I said I was going to do something with color, because I'm going to do something with color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the squares at one end, let's say, um, Let's say we make them uh, yellow and then we'll make the squares at the other end uh, this kind of um, uh, bluey purpley color. Um, and uh, we can do that again with a fall off if we want. Um, but let's just uh, take a look at um, how this, um, how, how we can do that. So um, if I go to the rectangle shape and on the, uh, the fill color here, but we can just, if I just click to set a color, uh, we have we have our, our color here. Um, if I want to set um, the colors based on a fall off, I'm gonna need to use a color blend behavior. Um, I can also use color to index. Uh, so color to index will assign a color from along a gradient to every different every different duplicate. I'll show you both. Um, so we'll do, if we do color to index, I'll just type in index. So it's uh, index to color, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I got the name wrong. Um, so let's uh, let's just pick colors here. It doesn't really matter what we're doing. Um, did I say yellow? I can't remember what I said. Um, then all we need to do is take the output from the index to color, just drag that straight onto fill color like so, and then that's our kind of, um, we've got uh, the bright yellow at the top here, and then it kind of transitions backwards uh, going through to the um, to the uh, blue um, at the bottom. Uh, this isn't what I want though. I want the color in the bottom right to be controlled by a fall off. So actually I'm just going to get this index color. I'm going to hit delete to get rid of it. What I'm going to use instead is a color blend. So um, by adding color blend, uh, by the way this add menu here is where you can add anything from the app. So I just typed in color blend there but also I can right click on fill color, go add behavior and type color blend. Sorry, not type. I can uh, click on it, and that gives us a, a color blend, uh, like so. Again, the color blend can be controlled by a fall off, so I can add a fall off, and we're blending between black and white, so that's that's of no use to us. Uh, but I can, um, if I click on a stop, then I can drag a color onto the, um, uh, I can drag a color onto the swatch here, and um, that gives us uh, the ability to control. Sorry, if I grab this. Fourth gives us the ability to control the color uh, based on um, the, this fall off here. So we're going from this kind of purple to this yellow as we transition across the uh, the grid. Um, and I can make that fall off bigger if I want to. Hold down Shift so that it grows equally in all axes. And yeah, that's um, that's kind of what I wanted to achieve with this loader. Again, I can make the comp square and smaller. And um, I just, I'm just going to turn the fall offs off so that we can't see them. And then this is our final animation. 
Okay, nice and fun. And then what do I need to do to export this to Lottie? Well, it'd be nice if I gave this a name, so we'll call this uh, Jeep Loader like so. And then I just need to uh, use a shortcut um, to export to Lottie, it's in the file menu. Um, export that to the desktop. And then let's load this up in Lottie files, get rid of the other one. And then drag in that loader. And here we are. So we have a duplicator in Cavalry, we're using fall offs, we're using color blends, we've used index to color, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Lots of different things going on in Cavalry. And then we export it to Lottie and it all just works. And that's something that I want to underline. We've tried really hard with our native Lottie export to, to just make things work from Cavalry. No matter what crazy feature you're using in Cavalry, we just want it to work when you export it. So there are a couple of holes, some things that maybe uh, you can't do. Just let us know when you hit them. Um, but on the whole, we're really hoping that you can you can get very far uh, just, um, just with the default settings and by not changing anything. So we'll get into some of the more advanced stuff later on. But for now, this is how you export um, some, a duplicator, fall off and all that kind of thing to Lottie. Um, the answer is you just do it. Moving on to path animation. So path animation in Cavalry is where you take a shape, so you draw it with a pencil, you draw it with a pen, or any shape that you make procedurally, you make it editable, and then you can move those points around and you can animate those points with keyframes. So let's create uh, um, let's create an ellipse. I'll make this ellipse slightly larger. And then um, what I need to do is I, I can't actually edit this. If I uh, move over to the edit shape tool, which is the, um, the A key, um, notice that um, my, um, uh, the, the mouse is saying non-editable points. So um, I, can't, I can't move these around. But what I can do is if I click and drag, uh, it's gonna say, would you like to make the shape editable? I'll say no, because there's a keyboard shortcut that you can use as well, or a menu item. So make editable in the shape menu, or you can use Control E on Windows or Command E on the Mac, and that will just make this shape editable. And you can see that it's editable now because the points have changed from squares into circles, and we have this little path direction indicator going on at the top here. And when I load the editable UI into the attribute editor, you'll see that we have this path attribute that has a keyframe and a keyframe button next to it. So if I click the keyframe button, this will set a keyframe for uh, for the for the path at this point. Then if I say on frame, I don't know, uh, frame forty, if I I could I could grab a um, I could grab a bezier handle and I can move these around and that could be my animation. Um, uh, or I could be lazy and uh, just select all of the points and then Alt click to get rid of all of their, to, to convert them all to linear points instead of bezier points. And then my animation is this. And then on say frame 80, let's uh, select that first keyframe. I'm gonna go copy and then paste, which will put us back to a circle. So we're kind of doing this breathing action. Um, and then um, again, magic easing works on path animation. So let's, uh, let's do a bounce out and then let's do a spring out on this one. And then if I play that back, that's our animation kind of just kind of bouncing in and then that quick spring, uh, push N and then uh, to set the end frame and then Alt R to set the range to the uh, playback range, set the composition range to the playback range. Um, and then let's obviously, let's give this a color. Yeah, and that's it really. And then to export the slotty again, we can just um, use the shortcut, put this on the desktop and um, we'll call this path anim test like so. Then over in Safari, we can drag that file in and our path animation with magic easing has come through onto um, into, uh, into Lottie, just like that. So the, in this scene, we have just a rectangle that's just bouncing up and down. And the rectangle, what's, what's interesting about it is that it has a squetch deformer attached to it. So the squetch deformer is something that allows you to have a squash, uh, Squ squash and stretch, <laughs> sorry. And you can uh, you can basically create these outward bulges or inward bulges to make something look like it's stretching or you can make it look like it's squashing. And that's what this deform is about. And it exports to Lottie just fine. So if I just show you that, just uh, export this onto the desktop, head over into Safari and load that animation in. This is what we get. Now, this gets really interesting if you lay these things up because of course you add deformers in Cavalry via the deformers menu and there are lots of deformers in here and they all work. So I can choose, for example, a 3D matrix deformer 
and on frame, ooh, frame, frame, what are we, six, I'm gonna set a keyframe on rotation Y, and then on frame, let's see, where, we, where do we come back down? Um, sort of a 360 degrees or something on here, and we're now doing this crazy flip as part of our animation. Okay, now let's just try exporting this to Lottie. We'll replace the one that's already there, and then let's drag that in. And there we've got our crazy flipping box squash stretch animation uh, in Lottie files. So finally, let's take a look at some of the more advanced settings uh, that we have for Lottie. Hopefully you, you won't really need to go near them very often. Um, we have, when we export to Lottie, we have um, these lots of automated checks and things, which hopefully will remove a lot of the manual setup from you. But when you need to go manual, we do have those options. And you need to go manual, for, for example, when you're using a cell animation shape or when you, you, you end up exporting something animated that you want to be still. Okay, so let's take a look at this example where we have a, a cell animation of a cat. If I just play this back. This is um, a Studio Ghibli cat from an advert they did for Nissan about uh, oh, nine years ago or something that I traced. And... Um, this animation will not export to Lottie by default. And the reason for that is that the point counts are changing frame to frame. Uh, the number of contours in the path is changing frame to frame. Uh, and basically Lottie can't deal with that kind of uh, situation. So the way that we, we can um, tell Cavalry to export this kind of a mesh to Lottie is over in the advanced tab. And we've got these two options, Lottie Export and Lottie Baking. If we look at Lottie Baking, it's set to automatic. It's, that's the default. Uh, but you can override this. And there's an option down here, two options that are really interesting, Nuclear and Still. So Still will say, actually, regardless of whether this is animated or not, just export a single frame of this animation, uh, of, this, of this layer, sorry. Um, and that'll help keep the file size down if you've got something that's exporting as animated when you actually just want it to be still. Um, and then we've got this other option here, which is the nuclear option. And the nuclear option creates a series of meshes in Lottie that last for one frame each. And that means that you can export things like cell animation very easily from Cavalry to Lottie. So let's do that. We've chosen the nuclear option and we'll just export this to the desktop. And over in Lottie files, let's just drag that file in. And here's the result. Um, now, as you would assume, by exporting a mesh for every single frame, uh, sorry, a, a, a layer that lasts one frame for every frame of, uh, of an animation, you end up with a larger Lottie file when you do this. So this file is 73k uh, zipped. Um, uh, but the the thing is that th this is possible. You can do this from Cavalry. You can create some animation Lottie files uh, from Cavalry. So, um, yep, I just wanted to explain that. Um, a couple more things. We have this um, option here, export if visible or always export or never export. And that means that you can turn certain layers off from Lottie. So you can use them as templates or for trace or whatever, that kind of thing. And that means that these options will, uh, sorry, these layers um, will never be exported or they'll always be exported or they'll only be, but the default is that if it's not visible, we don't export it. And if it is visible we do but you can have a um, you can have control over that on a per layer basis in, in cavalry and then the final thing that i wanted to talk about is um uh, using uh, lottie as a render format so in our file format up here we have a lottie format and that will allow you to export or to queue up several different um compositions or um uh, or uh, dynamic renders of lottie files um all it's just to happen all at once when you hit the render all button they'll just all um get um spat out of uh, of cavalry so um that's there as well just so you know it's a it's an actual a queuable render format as well as having this quick option to just export it from the file menu um and that's everything that's a uh, lottie export and cavalry uh, let me know what you think and um yeah hope, uh, and also show us what you do <laughs> Um, yeah, we're really excited about this. And there, there are things that we still need to do. You know, there are always improvements that we can make. Uh, but we're, um, yeah, we're really excited about this.